All right, folks, good afternoon and welcome to Severn's quote unquote home opener. First game at Kinder Farm Park this spring as your Severn Admirals take on the Gerstel Falcons. I'm Mr. Maggart here to do commentaries, hoping to be joined by John Esposito, but he might be caught in traffic somewhere, so we'll, we'll see where he's at. But anyway, it's a pleasure for uh, us to have you join us this afternoon on YouTube, Admiral TV. Uh, Gerstel comes into today's game with a 3-5 and five record, 3-2 three and two in the MIAB Conference. Severn comes in with a 4-9 mark, 3-3 three and three in conference play. Go through the starting lineups real quick. For the visiting Falcons, leading off is the catcher. Uh, MSJ transfer, junior number 25, Braden Gaminer. Batting second is the first baseman, number three, Gavin Larson. Heading third, the center fielder, number seven, Dylan Nee. Batting cleanup and doing the pitching, number 10, Travis Smith. Batting fifth, the right fielder, number six, Jack Bruffy. Batting sixth, the shortstop, number one, Ryan Morrison. Batting seventh, the left fielder, number 12, Drake Hankins. In the eighth spot, second baseman, sophomore transfer from Mount Airy Christian, number 14, John Davis. And batting ninth, the third baseman, number nine, Craig Masik. On the mound, again, as mentioned before, for the Falcons is Travis Smith. Smith comes into the game uh, with only three innings pitched this year, but he does have electric stuff. So we'll see what it looks like. Mother Nature has not been kind to baseball in the Mid-Atlantic over the past few weeks. And then for your Severn Admirals, leading off at third base, number two, Fletcher Warner. Batting second and doing the pitching is number 22, Matt Fisher. Batting third in left field, number five, Ben Campion. Hitting cleanup to shortstop, Crofton High School transfer, number four, Aiden Shadlick. Batting fifth in first base, number eight, Caden Blank. Batting sixth and doing the catching, number 14, a sophomore transfer from Crofton High School, Brendan Shadlick. Batting seventh in center field, number six, Sean Ward. Batting eighth, designated hitter, number 11, Lawrence Jacobs. He'll be hitting for the right fielder, number 21, Max Barney. And batting ninth, the second baseman, number 17, Andy Blank. On the mound again for the Admirals is Matt Fisher. Fisher, 2-1 and one on the year, 16 innings, 16 hits, 10 runs, 7 earned, 8 walks, 17 strikeouts, 3.06 ERA, and opponents are hitting 262 off the junior southpaw. It is an absolute glorious day here at Kinder Farm Park. It's in the mid-70s. It is sunny. We are very thankful that we were able to get this game moved up from tomorrow to today because tomorrow's forecast does not look the greatest. Um, so... Severn, this is technically Severn's third home game of the year, but this is the first time that they've stepped foot on Kinder Farm Park for a contest in the spring of 2024. Severn's first home game, which was back on March 11th against St. Mary's, was played at beautiful Joe Cannon Stadium. And then on March 28th, the Admirals were set to host Mount Carmel in a contest that featured a lot of rain in the in days leading up to that game. And so... A lot of teams were looking for turf field to be able to play on, and kudos to Athletic Director Julian Dominic for being able to find the Admirals a home turf to play on. They did have to travel a little ways up to Ripken Stadium Complex up in Aberdeen, but they were able to get that game in against the uh, Mount Carmel Cougars and came away with a 16-3 victory. So third home game of the year for the Admirals, but first here at the friendly confines of Kinder Farm Park. We're set to get underway here shortly as the managers meet at the home plate to go over ground rules, exchange lineups, exchange pleasantries, and the such. We'll be back with you shortly. Anyone over here have a silver Honda Odyssey? Alright, let me ask the umpires.
Yeah. Anyone want to buy a Honda Silver Odyssey? Cheap. They might still got a lean on it. I don't want it. <laughs> And your Admirals take the field. Kinder Farm Park for the first time in the spring of 2024. As strolling in right now is the play-by-play -play commentator for today's game, John Esposito. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, young and old. It's time to play ball. Mr. Magger, what can we expect for today? It's going to be a, a close competition, I think. So the Admirals, both teams played yesterday. Um, this game was originally scheduled to be played tomorrow, but Mother Nature uh, dictated it to be moved up a day. So we have beautiful 75-degree sunny weather. Uh, the Admirals uh, come in with a 4-9 record, 3-3 three and three in conference. Yesterday they played at undefeated Boys Latin. Gave them a competition, but came up just a little bit short. 6-2 to two the final in that one. The kind of surprise of the day in the MIAB conference was the result with Gerstel in a home contest against Glenel Country. Glenel Country had only one win in conference play. Gerstel came in as the clear favorite. Glenel Country put up a three spot in the top of the first, and they just carried that momentum to a, a upset 6-3 victory over Gerstel yesterday. So Gerstel came into that game with a 3-1 record in the conference. Um, so it, it's baseball. You gotta, you gotta make the pitches. You gotta make the plays. You gotta swing the bat. It doesn't matter. Any given day, whoever performs better is gonna most likely come out on top. From what we've seen so far, Matthew Fisher, number 22, is absolutely curling them in the warm up. And there's the throw, and that's perfect. So setting the defense up for your Admirals, going from first to third, going around. So, Caden Blank at first, Andy Blank at second, Aiden Shadlick at short, Fletcher Warner at third, and going from left to right in the outfield is Ben Campion, Sean Ward, and Max Barney behind the dish, Brendan Shadlick, and on the mound is the aforementioned Matt Fisher. Foul tip. 78 on that pitch. So, is that a speedometer? Matt Fisher bringing the heat, first pitch of the game. Top of the notch setup out here. Feature looks bright for Admiral TV. And this is this is upstairs 1-1. One, one. So we haven't done a two-person broadcast before, so we're going to walk through this live with you all. So, John, you're going to be given the play-by-play -play commentary of what's going on. Okay. So I'll give you a little walk through here as to what, what just That's happened. Here. Out. Exactly. So fastball 80 miles per hour. Uh, the leadoff man, Braden Miner, a junior transfer from Mount St. Joe, uh, hitting 500 on the year with two doubles, a triple, and four RBIs. Down in the count, one and two. That's what it sounds like for play by play. On um, play by play? Yeah. Okay. Fastball inside and high. Fisher, 16 innings on the year, 306 ERA, Conan Tinton just 262. Hit 68. Curveball on that one, misses upstairs, the count runs full, 3-2. Fish looking composed as ever. Fastball, swing and a miss, 79. That was one of their main threats. So Gaminer, like I mentioned, he'd have hit 500 on the year coming into today's game. The two hitter, Gavin Larson, the starting first baseman, stepping into the dish for the Falcons. He's hitting 550 on the year, but he brings a little different element to the table. He's more of a, a bunt, um, slap it around, she has a lot of speed type of hitter. Nothing fish can't take care of. Just a little inside fastball there.
right down the middle, 76. Took a little bit off that one, just get it over, get it ahead. You notice the third baseman, Warner, playing in, basically even with the bag. Right down the middle. Strike two. Catching it at the letters there, 78 on that. So it'll be interesting to see whether Warner decides to play maybe a step back because it'd be unlikely for him to punt here with two strikes. So they're anticipating the bunch with the inward position or no? In on the hands. And that's off. Fits in, fits in the center field for a base hit. So Larson doing kind of Larson things as he's done all year. It's, he's not hitting for pop. I mean, no extra base hits, but a 550 batting average, that does speak for itself. So, Three hitter, Dylan D nee coming up. He's batting 227 on the season. So 227 hitter, one double, five RBIs. Pick off a count. They're gonna pay attention to him. He's he's one of their one of their faster runners. Have, the Falcons haven't stolen a ton of bases. Larson hasn't stolen stole a ton of bases, but they might be looking to move here. You know, going against Fisher, strong starting pitcher for the Admirals. Runs might be at a premium to if they can steal an extra 90 feet here. Ground ball to third, toss to second. Gets the out and then safe at first. That was a wonderful pick there by Andy Blank at second base there to be able to make that turn and get that throw off to first. Couldn't quite get it, but not a bad look, that's for sure. And when they say drip over skill, shortstop aided Shadlack encompasses that exact phrase. Pick off attempt. But I mean, Warner had time to make that throw. He kind of threw it a little bit low, maybe he aimed it there, but Blank, freshman, doing a great job of manning that. Is that one? Pass good? ball. And they're gonna steal. So wild pitch, because the ball hit the dirt first. So the, usually so wild pitch is the pitcher made the mistake. Right. Pass balls and exactly. So a wild pitch, generally if the ball hits dirt. All bets are off, so that would be considered a wild pitch. If the ball is in the air and it's something the catcher should catch with no obstruction, then that would be considered a pass ball. Learn something new every day out here. Questionable call. Yeah. Fish painting the zone in so far. And they're going to intentionally walk Travis Smith here. He's batting currently 455 on the season. Yeah, so that, that makes sense. Smart Don't... call. If I've ever seen him. So that brings up the right fielder, Jack Bruffy. You might know that name from the uh, wrestling season. Really? Yeah, I think he was a 157 or 165 pounder for the wrestling team. Oh, okay. Actually, yeah, I think I... You might have wrestled him in an exhibition, perhaps. Take a good look at his face. We wrestled 150 this year. Okay. So it, it's possible. Because you were a 150 and 157, correct? Yeah, I, I went up a few times. Okay. Skilled wrestler. We'll see how that translates to the, the diamond. To go back to our conversation before about the difference between a wild pitch and a pass ball. So a wild pitch is a, is a mistake on the pitcher. So if a runner advances and scores because of the result of a wild pitch, that counts as an earned run. Whereas if the runner, ball's driven Fly deep ball. up. Deep left, and he's under it. Nice job there by Ben Campion. He tracked that one beautifully for your Admirals out in left field there. You wouldn't expect anything less from the senior going to Dartmouth. No runs, one hit, there was no errors. Two runners left on base, half an incomplete. Gerstel, zero, seven, coming to bat. So, we just let it marinate in between the innings. Yeah, because I'm not going to keep reaching in and out for that. Do you, are we muting it for that? Or we no, we're still, we're still. Out. It's fine. They can hear us um, for right now. So, yeah. Um, Learning on the job out here, folks. It's all good. First, first baseball broadcast with actual students doing it, not Mr. Maggard. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, so your job, what you need to really focus in on is 
calling the action. So, oh, you we like to think that people are watching this, I and mean, they very, very well might be, but there might be people at work. There might be people driving where they can't watch, but they're hooked in, so they're going to want to listen to. So that's where the play-by-play -play is really important in being able to describe. So, like for example, so play-by-play. -play, why do I say these stats? Because I'm, I'm going to. I'm, I can talk about it. Oh, okay, okay. I can talk about it. But I'm saying it's like, okay, so Smith, righty, I'm set, one and pitch, fastball away, ball one. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Do I say just like 77? Or like, what's the normal way to say like the speed? Fastball 77. Or yeah. So, curveball, hits the dirt, 75 mile an hour breaker on that one, ball two. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And then when the ball's put in play, so like for example, fly ball deep to left field. Um, Do you have the seven line? Yeah, it's a seven. You know, oh, fly, yeah, right. you know, you know, fly ball left field, Campion going back, has got a beat on it, camping under it, makes a catch for the third and final out of the end. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then if you have something to say, so like, you know, a couple guys get on, you know, damage was averted there, no runs, one hit, no errors, two runners left, you know. I can walk you through that if, if that's a little too much. I can step. I what can, is that? That's kind of like the wrap, like leading into the wrap of the inning. Okay. You know okay. what I'm saying? Like, okay. describe what's happening with the batted ball. Like, ground ball to third, throw to second's a little bit low. Blake's able to scoop it, fires over to first, not in time, you know? So that somebody who's listening in is still knowing what's going on. It's kind of like right. radio commentary a little because we're kind of hitting both platforms. And we are back. Bottom half of the first inning. Warner leading off here. Currently... Adding 442 on the season. Stops on the team there for the Admirals. Only a sophomore. Big things to come. Stole home yesterday. Straight steal home. That was that was impressive. Got a nice walk and lead. Quick. Fastball down the middle. Looking strike 85. Yeah. So Smith has an arm. He 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 will he will touch mid upper 80s. There's a cut, grounder to the pitcher. He's gonna walk it slowly over for the out of first. So a little comebacker, one three on the put out for you scoring at home there, and there's one away. Little dribbler. Got it off the end of the bat. But something, something good. Matthew Fisher cannot take care of. Well, I mean, and, and Warner, I mean, that's pretty good for a sophomore to be seeing mid upper 80s and be on time or even a smidge early for that. I mean, that's. Again, like you were saying, good things to come. Fastball inside and low. Pitcher almost dodging. Taking his time here. He's going to pick up the signs from Coach. So Fisher, the 351 hitter on the year with four doubles, four RBIs. Two of those four doubles came in the season opener against Riverdale Baptist, one of which... If it was here, it probably would have left the yard. It hit the top of the fence, and they had a high, higher fence at uh, Riverdale Baptist. As uh, looks like Coach Starr and the home plate umpire are having a conversation. Is it possibly about something? The zone, on, I, think. I don't know if it's about the zone. I think it's about something with maybe the center fielder. The center fielder has a white sleeve on his right arm, and is that potentially... He did point to the elbow region. <laughs> so maybe he's pointing at the center fielder because he's got a white sleeve, and so the ball might be hidden in it coming out of the slot. Um, as a pitcher, you're not allowed to wear a white sleeve on your throwing arm because that's a player safety issue. So we'll, we'll see what's going on here as the coaches are, or the umpires are talking, and they're talking to the home plate. And I'm, I have heard that rule. I'm pretty sure it's legal for position of players, but yeah, we'll see what the call is. So, all right, well, nothing changed. Counts 1-0. Fish steps back in the box. Grounder to short, fielded, slight bobble, recovers, thrown, and just... That's an E6 there to reach on that. Yeah, so the bobble and then the high throw from the shortstop Morrison there allows Matt Fisher, who is running hard down the line, to reach on an E6. Whether it's an error or hit, and most importantly, it is a base runner, and that allows David Livingston to come in and courtesy run for Fisher as he is the pitcher for today's game. Important distinction between courtesy and pinch runner. Pinch runner's actual substitute. 
Yeah, so we, we play by generally college rules with some NFHS rules mixed in, and that being one of them. Foul ball, Ben Campion. Sent down the left field line. So mentioned before, Ben Campion made the third and final out. Nice job tracking that fly ball to the left for the last out of the top half of the frame. 415 hitter on the air with two doubles and a team high 12 RBIs on the campaign. Way outside there. Well, that was a changeup at 75. That had some good movement. It started on the play. That was great pitch recognition from Campion to see that and uh, and to lay off the lay off the pitch. Would you say he has enough high school velocity to overcome the occasional mistakes in location? At, at this level, you throw a mid upper 80s is, is gonna is gonna allow you to make a few more mistakes. As you see, Livingston dancing there, getting Smith's attention. Forces him to step off. They're giving him a good look. Here comes the fish. In the dirt, good block of the catch. Watching the back pick there of Levinson. So Smith's only had three innings pitched this year, and as I mentioned before, Mother Nature has not been kind to Mid-Atlantic baseball over the past three weeks. Today, notwithstanding, today is an absolutely glorious day. It is about... That pitch was down just below the knees. Fastball at 86. So the highest reading of the day so far, taken below the knees for ball three. Counts three and one. Eighty-six. Fastball. Down the middle. I'm not down the middle. A little more on the inside. Yeah, that painted the black mistake. there. That was that was not down the middle. Oh, that's and a lot. passed on the pickoff attempt. David's going to steal. So and he's it, safe by a mile. So it, umpire's hands are up, so that ball looks like it appears it may have maybe rolled or wedged underneath the fence there. An obstruction of some kind, but nonetheless, E1 on the failed pickoff attempt at first brings Livingston up to scoring position with one away, full count for three hitter Ben Campion. What does E1 mean again? Asking for a friend. Hmm? What does E1 mean again? Air on the pitcher, so the positions are one for pitcher, two oh. for catcher. Oh, that. Yep. And uh, a cut looked like a ball outside, but not a bad swing. Good job of uh, borderline pitch there, protected, fighting it off, getting another one. Maybe get a better one and get a ball four. Curveball, 74 no goes ball, pass ball. David stealing. So and Ben Ben's gonna take first. Ben works a beautiful seven pitch walk. Curveball gets through the legs of the catcher. We're gonna call that a pass ball there. That should have been caught and blocked by the catcher. Uh, I believe that's Gaminer, the transfer from yes, Gaminer, the transfer from Mount St. Joe. So runners on the corner, one out, brings up the cleanup hitter, Aim Shadlin. Aiden Shadlack currently has one home run this year, if I'm yeah. not mistaken. Yeah, and it was in Severn's last quote-unquote home game. <laughs> Where, where's the quotes come from? Fastball. 87. He brings he brings the cheese, folks. Um, so it was quote-unquote because it was supposed to be played here. This is Severn's first home game at Kinder Farm Park this year. Our first home game was played at Joe Cannon Stadium, and then the aforementioned home run game from Aiden Shadlick happened at Ripken Stadium up in Aberdeen. And Spartan. that was the QA doubleheader? No, was that, that was that was um, against Mount Carmel. Cow ball there from Shadlick. Gets back in the box. Shadlick, a uh, transfer from Crofton, a junior, hitting 342 this year with a double, the aforementioned home run, and six RBIs. Looking to do some damage here, put the Admirals up on top, hopefully. Runners on the corner, one out. Foul to the fence. In addition to baseball, Shadlack's an absolute robotic stud. Future of the program type stuff right there as well. Both Shadlacks are impressive on the baseball diamond this year, if I would say. Both Aiden and his brother Brendan, who's a sophomore, is the starting catcher. Family dynasty to come. Pitch in the dirt. David looking for a look at home there, but catch recovers it just in time. 
So then a lot of attention there might have been drawn to Livingston on third, but I think the more important was that Ben stayed at first base there. No one in front of him. He could have probably just put his head down and gone, and they wouldn't have thrown behind him because that would have led Livingston. So that four, double play is still intact here with that ball in the dirt and the count being 2-2. Two -two. Not the best position to be in, not the worst. Swing and a miss by Shadlock. And another pass ball. And there we go. First run on the board of the day by David Livingston, courtesy running for Matthew Fisher. Oh. It looks like oh, so Shadlock's going to come off. Yeah, because first base was occupied at the time. So it is a strikeout swinging. First base was occupied, so he couldn't go. But the runners on first and third both advance on the pass ball. And nonetheless, the most important thing is that your Admirals have a one nothing lead. So for the viewers at home, drop third strike, you can't get a first if it's taken. If the base is occupied, unless there are two outs. If there, if there are two outs, then you can go. What rule of baseball do you not know? That's a better question. It's important to, if you're going to talk Fastball, about Fastball, strike. Actually, that was a, it looks like maybe a slide piece there at 77. Had a little bit of late movement down and down and in. 77's a bit low for his fast. So yeah, so that's what I'm saying. I think it's maybe a slider or maybe a hard curve. Definitely something with some break. So it looks piece of a uh, new control. So it looks like, you know, his fastball looks like it's it's mid-80s, he's topped at 87. It looks like he's got a change piece that, that goes probably mid-70s, and then he's got a curve or a slide breaking ball piece that maybe mid-upper 70s. Caden Blank at the mount. Oh. That was a great read there by Campion to read that one in the dirt that time and take that extra 90 feet on the wild pitch. And that was a close call to good recovery by catch. Yeah, they say that you don't want to make the first or the last out of the inning at third base there, but Campion read that perfectly and now may have just taken the ball in the dirt out of out of the contention there. Oh. Foul ball. You crank up the brightness on that one. It's gonna make it die quicker. So those are the little things folks. So like runner on third with two outs, you might be asking what's the big deal because you know you're going on contact from second, you're likely going to score anyway. Well, now that he's thrown a lot of pitches in the dirt, there's been balls that have gotten by the, the catcher so far past balls. And so what's beautiful about that is that now if he's thinking about throwing a break or throwing a change up in the dirt, he might think twice about it. So as a hitter, it gives you the chance to think, I'm going to look up, I'm going to set my sights up and not chase something down below the knees. Kanan Black, always one to let it fly. Pickoff moved to third. Oh, they and got that's him. called out. But that's tough. So it's not often you see a pickoff move to third base, but they got him there for the third and final out of the inning. But your Admirals do score a run. They did not record a hit. There were two errors, two pass balls, and no runners left on base. So we're an inning complete here from Kinder Farm Park. 7-1, Gerstel 0. And that's got to be tough on Campy in there mentally. <laughs> Nothing he hasn't dealt with before. Well, baseball, you got to have a fish. You got to, as to quote Skylar Morton, you got to have a fish mentality or a goldfish mentality. You got to let it 10 seconds and let it go. Okay, I like that. You know, baseball's a game of failure. You're going to fail. If you're a hitter in the professional level and you fail seven times out of 10, you're going to go to Hall of Fame. Yeah. So. One zero is not too shabby for the top of the second. Well, what, what you can talk about is what I'll talk about is like how it's important that you know so around six, seven, eight. So towards the bottom half of the lineup, you score a run in the bottom half, get a quick one, two, three inning, come back and get a quick. You know what I'm saying? Like try to get a little bit of momentum. Makes sense. Like that's. Well, you, what you want to do is, well, now you're facing the bottom half of the lineup, so now if you can get a quick inning here as Fisher, you can get right back on in and hit, take the momentum they had for 
Hopefully easy picking, easy pickings here on the bottom of the lineup. Matthew Fisher looking to put him away quickly. So we begin the bottom or top half of the second. Six, seven, eight, due up for the Falcons. Leading off is the shortstop who made the first error of the of the inning, Ryan Morrison. Fastball, 78 miles an hour. So six, seven, eight. I mean, the sure. Admirals get up one nothing. It's really important here for them. Maybe get a you know facing the bottom portion of this line to try to get a quick inning. Curveball at 66. Get a quick inning here. Get back into the dugout and try to uh, build on that lead. But starting off with uh, with the lead, it's a good good place to be. There's a pitch by Fisher, and he just pops right up under it, and that's into outfield. Caught by center fielder Sean Ward. Sean Ward, I'll tell you what. That thing to his outfield lifestyle nicely, I would say. He has been an absolutely glorious addition. What a consummate teammate and professional he has been for the Admirals. He, folks, he was playing shortstop last year, playing third at the start of the season. The team asked him, hey, can you give us some help out in the outfield? Goes out to center in his very first game at Queen Anne's, makes a diving catch out in left center. So, Four year great. starter and ground ball to short, bobbled but picked up and throw just in time. For the out. And two quick outs. We talked about before getting these quick outs is going to be something very helpful for the Admirals to maybe get back in. And uh, beautiful play by number four, Eden Shabla. Yeah, he's got a cannon. He, uh, is he a pitcher? He is throwing some innings for us this year, yes. And fly ball out into left field. Max Barney right diving catch. Right field, my fault. Diving catch, but falls just short. And a beautiful read, too. Yeah, so that was off the bat of John Davis, uh, Mount Airy Christian transfer, who hit 154 on the air. Barney absolutely did everything he could there to lay out and uh, try to come up with it. And But more importantly, even though he didn't come up with it, he was able to get a piece of it and keep it in front of him, not let it get by and give up an extra 90 feet. Some maturity there from the young buck. Craig Masik, the batter. Would you consider Maxwell Barney another feature of the program? Oh, oh. throw to second base here on the steal, and he's out. Beautiful. Wow. That's what we're talking about. Put him away early and build up that lead once more. Wow. Now the Admiral's that, back on the offense. That was an absolute hose there from Brendan Chadlick throwing to his brother Aiden with the tag. 2-6, caught stealing to end the frame. No runs, one hit, no errors, nobody left on base. One and a half innings complete. Your score, seven, one, Gerstel, zero. Steven Brown making a much needed water run right now. I don't know. My only thought was that the center fielder had a white sleeve on, and he was right in line from a left-handed hitter looking at the release point. The ball might have been getting camouflaged with the sleeve out there. But a fielder is allowed to... I think... Yeah, yeah, right, right, but I think that might have been what he was talking about, but I'm not 100% sure. That was the only thing that I could think of in terms of, like, equipment or... There was, there was a, it was a discussion, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. How hard does this... I, I guess. How hard does this go? Not 81? High uh, 80s at 87 tops. Yeah, he's 85 to 87. There's that quite a pleasure to Let's Eight, hope he keeps throwing in the dirt. 85 to 87 fast. Change up mid 70s. Curve, slide, whatever it is. Breaking ball is that pitch. It's upper 70s. Pretty quick for an off speed, though. Yeah. But, it's like a typical. But it has, it has a lot of bite. Like it's not a lot of horizontal horizontal movement, like it breaks hard at the end. It's not, yeah, it's not loopy. It's so like the curveball kind of has this like constant, almost like a twelve six motion. Whereas the slider is a, so like the curveball has both curve and downward movement. The slider is a little bit more horizontal movement, not as much downward. That's like at the end. Right? Yeah, it's not. Good. Yep. So will your 
Dude, that's song. Or your Admiral TV class. Will they be taking over broadcast after this one? Uh, not taking over, but supplementing. Okay. All right. Leading off the bottom half of the second inning after a very quick top half is... Caden Blank, who we were talking a little bit about before, he was up when Campion got picked off at third last inning. So, Blank to lead things off with a fresh count for the Admirals. Way outside. That one's only 83 miles an hour there. Big league take. Good cut there, right down the left field line. So, blank 286 hitter with three doubles and eight RBIs on the air. One of those three doubles was a critical two-run go-ahead double at St. Paul's back on March 15th in a 4-3 victory Count over one, the Crusaders. One. It's like a 12-6 into the dirt. 74 on that. Sorry, I was talking over you. You're absolutely right there. No problem. Change up. Into the dirt again. That would be a... 3-1 the count. 76 would... 3-1 yep. the count. Yeah. Yeah. Another foul ball cut. Same path. Right down third baseline. So... Blank swinking a Marucci Cat X. Um, not the uh, hotly contested hype fire drop five that PG has recently banned. What was the problem with that? Too, it's too hot. They're saying it's just too, too much exit velo. Strike down the middle. 80, That's going to send him back to the dugout looking. 87 on that one. Painted the black on that, and there's one away. Brings up the catcher, Brendan Shadlick, who gunned down the runner to end the top half of the second inning. Getting on the offense here. Cool. Slide or curve, whatever it is, 76. Strike. Shadlick hitting 324 in the air with a double, a triple, and six RBIs. Not bad for a sophomore transfer from Crofton. Hard grounder to short, cleanly fielded, thrown over to first. And dropped by the first baseman. Safe. That was a good throw, but the first baseman dropped the ball. So officially. Top of the order here. No, not top of the order. Nope. So officially, an E3 credit Morrison, the shortstop, with an assist on that. He did double pump, but the throw was there in plenty of time and not in the dirt. And Shadlick, Brendan Shadlick, I should specify, because there are two Shadlicks on the team. Uh, it's going to be a courtesy runner. Uh, Max Barney. Maxwell. Yeah, because Shadlick, the catcher. So Max Barney, the right fielder, is going to come in as the courtesy runner. Sean Ward, El Presidente, steps into the dish. Speech guy. Upstairs. Strike. Lays off the high cheese at 81 for ball one. Check swing. Seems confused by the call. On the count there, question. One pitch. And that's inside. Catcher drops it. Takes a look at Max for first. So Sean Ward, don't be fooled. 154 batting average, two doubles, three RBIs, but he has hit a ton of line drives and lasers but right absolutely at people. Like, he has absolutely barreled the ball, but it has been right at people. He is due for a few ducks norths and dying quails to drop for him. Pick off a tenth on Max Barney. Here's the pitch. Outside, and he's going to go for the second base throw as Max steals. Calls safe. So that pitch was called a strike, but a steal by Max Barney. House two one. Here's the pitch. 
and it's a cut, little dribbler down the third baseline to Zachary Starr. Head coach of the Admirals, second season at the helm. Was an assistant under former head coach Bob Laffey, who's now the assistant coach at Indian Creek. He went up to he worked went up to Tower Hill in Delaware last year for a season. There's the pitch, fastball. He gets under it, and that is caught by the left fielder as they toss it in for a look at second. Unsuccessful though. Yeah. Tough break by six. Sean deserves a few of those to drop, man. He has been unlucky this year. On top of that, like he's been walked nine times and plunked five times, which is tops on the team. He he deserves uh he deserves a little baseball walk here. Now batting we have Lawrence Jacobs, number eleven. Junior. Outside ball. A little reach back. You heard a little Monica Sells grunt there. For those of you with early 90s tennis references. Not picking up on that one. I'm not yeah, gonna I mean, probably not. My, my generation might know that one. Or... Comes set. Gives him a look at second. Max expertly gets back in time. So Jacobs, two RBIs on the year. As a person walks their dog in the batter's eye in center field. Here's the pitch. Fastball, a little grounder to first. He's going to make the out with plenty of time to go. So the air does not prove costly for Gerstel. For Severn, no runs, no hits, one air, one runner left on base. We're two innings complete here from Kinder Farm Park. Severn one, Gerstel zero. The sun is absolutely beating down. It's about 76 degrees. Yeah, it's going to be me and John McCone. I, I, I'm talking to him. He said he, he would do a bunch of this too. Okay. How many more home games are there? Either? After this, I think there are five. Okay. And then that doesn't count if we host any in the postseason. How many games do they play? Uh, they play, I believe, a little over 20. 15 conference games. He's here. He's over here. All right. We are set to begin the top half of the third inning. Severn leading Gerstel 1-0. The nine-hitter, third baseman Craig Masik, stepping back in as he was at the dish when John Davis got gunned down at second base for the third and final out of the second inning. He got hosed all right. Absolute cannon of the sophomore catcher, Brendan Shadwell. Here's a pitch by Fisher. Fastball down the middle, 77 miles per hour. So Masik was kind of the hero of the Falcons last year as they made their run to the championship series. And he takes a hack out of cleanly fielded by Fletcher Warner with the backhand and throws the first with plenty of time to spare. No problem there. Nice job, backhand, one hopper. Warner comes up and fires to get Mazik for the first out of the inning. Turns the lineup over, brings up Braden Geminer, the catcher, junior transfer from Mount St. Joe, who struck out his first time up. Here's the pitch for Fisher, breaking ball. Outside corner. 66 on that one. up the sign. Here's the pitch. Another breaking ball looks like. It's just a little too high. Return to the well there. Second time through, you can't give him the same look as you gave first time through. Not too bad. It's the last thing you can do. And there's the cut and it's off the shortstop. It's bobbled by Shadlack. Recovered. And they also but it's too late. Yeah, he was motoring down the line there. A lot of speed from the catcher, so I'm not sure 
I'm not an official scorer. Well, I, I used to be, but I'm not for Severn. So I'm going to mark that as a single, but they might rule as an air. Go with whatever's put on Game Changer. What is the Parks. official? So routine effort. So this pickoff move to first, a little Max Scherzer throw over. Um, Three stepping in the box here. Yep, Gavin Larson, the first baseman. So what is the rule for an air? Match popped up into foul territory. He's going to look at it for Fletcher, but it's over the fence. So any any miscue that is caused on a play that would that you would consider as the official score routine effort. So if it was a routine effort or it was a routine play, if somebody didn't have to do something exceptional to get the out, then that is, constitutes an error. Pick off attempt at first. So one of the things that official scorers sometimes think is, well, if like for a fly ball that's misjudged, right? That they think, well, it didn't touch the glove, so I can't give it an air. That's not what it says in the rule book. It just talks about routine effort, routine play. So on a missed pop up, that it's not blowing like a gale force like it was at Saint Ma when we played St. Mary's back on March 11th. Um, that it doesn't have to touch the glove in order to be an air. Nice block. Nice block there from... Uh... So is that a wild pitch? Or if he blocks it, it's nothing? Well, it's nothing. It's only a wild pitch if the runner's, runner advances. Okay. Down the middle, was that a ball? It wasn't down, down the, the middle. That was cold just inside. And, that was a, and he reached back on that one a little bit. That was 79 from Fisher. So it counts two and one. Chop foul. Oh, dribbler down the first baseline. That's foul. Larson, like I mentioned before, he's a 550 hitter. He singled his first time up, so his average is even higher than that. No extra base hits, though. He's not a power threat, but he is a threat to get on. Pest, you know, a pest at the plate. Kind of a Ben Campion, though. So. And that's fouled off the count. And the count is two and two. So Larson, you know, he fell behind the count one, two, battled and was able to get a, a single that dropped into center field his first time up. Yeah, after he went there, you pretty much everyone in the ballpark here knew that he bought himself a throw over to first on that one. Quick guy. Well, anytime you steal, you, you think, are they doubling up? Is he going first movement? There's the pitch, swing and a miss, and throw to the second, and he's safe. Okay, but he did get a very valuable strikeout from a very difficult over 500 hitter, Gavin Larson, for the second out of the inning as Gminer does steal second. So he's in scoring position with two away for the center fielder, Dylan Nee. And play is stopped. What's the reason in there? Nee asked for time, so he put his hand up. Asked for time, the umpire granted it. Um, mid wind up though. It wasn't mid. It was. It was he asked it for earlier and accepted it. Um, Fisher could have thrown that ball and there been no consequence because it would have been a dead ball. What does that mean? So if Fisher had just thrown that ball, and, yeah, that was a ball. He called it. Um, so if he threw that ball 50 feet over over the backstop here, nothing would have happened out of that. Because it was a dead ball. So even if you hit it up. Wow, that pitch is sky into shallow left field. Campion coming in on that. Foul and just misses. Two outs, gotta go, let's go. And he's Welcome to Kinder Farm Park, folks. When we're calling from left field and anything that's down the left field line, we can't see. <laughs> because of the jet out. So what happens is the dug the backstop is offset back. And then the fence is angled forward to meet the dugouts. So by the angling of the forward, how far it's angled forward, a little, little geometry lesson for everyone here. It cuts down our line of sight down the down the lines. So 
you can pretty much call it better than we can if you're watching at home. Bustling students that can out here. So beautiful 66 mile an hour curveball that swung through and missed to make the count one and two. That's way inside. Well, Logic. 78 mile an hour fastball. I don't know if that's much of a miss there. He's really in on the plate there. He might be trying to get he him is off of it. Plate, that's true. Yeah, so maybe he's trying to get him off here to maybe come back away, or maybe he's going to bust him in again. Swung. Yeah, a miss. 77. And that's three outs. Admirals put him away once again. So two strikeouts on the inning, three for the afternoon for Fisher. No runs, a hit, no errors, one runner left, two and a half innings in the books, 7-1, Gerstel 0. So the Joe Cannon game was considered home. That was our home game, yes. As was the game up at um, Brick and Aberdeen. What was, why was that? Because the fields were unplayable because we had so much rain and the week leading up to Where that. Where is Aberdeen? Um, northeast Baltimore. So it's like it's like halfway between Baltimore and the Delaware line. So it's where the Aberdeen Ironbirds, where the um, single-A affiliate for the Orioles organization plays out of. It's actually called um, Lido's Field at Ripken Stadium. Lido's is the corporate sponsor, Rip, Ripken Stadium. So they, they didn't play on, at Lido's Field, though. They played at one of the um, Ripken Experience Fields. They played on the turf Yankee Stadium field. So they have a bunch of turf fields that are, like, youth-sized, and then they have full-on field, like, full regulation 60-90 diamonds there, too. It's a full-on complex that hosts lots of tournaments every year. So we got 912 coming up, so Andy Blank and then top of the order we got Short G on first base. There he goes. So remember the inning breaks we can have to We don't have to project until like they throw it out. So like the cue is like when they throw it out, that's what they come did I tell you I'm major in data science? No, you didn't. That's cool. That's really cool. We are back. Bottom half of the third inning. Your Admirals lead the visiting Gersell Falcons 1-0. Freshman second baseman Andy Blank stepping in for your Admirals. I'm dusting off the plate here. How's your first game in broadcasting Admirals baseball going, John? How, how's the experience been? Definitely bluebird skies. We're up 1 0. I'm learning a lot. I mean, how much else you can really ask for? Here's the pitch. And there's the cut from Andy Blank. Dribbler to second baseman. He bobbles it, but it recovers just in time. With a diving tag. Safe! By first base. Wow. So. I'm not sure what happened over there at first base. He dove for the ball. Well, so, so the second baseman. The ball was hit to the second baseman, came up on him, bobbled it, and then he thought he didn't have a lot of time, and so he threw probably a howitzer over to first, and it was wild. The first baseman did everything he could to dive, catch that. He actually tried to reach back and tap the first base back with his glove before Andy Blank got there, but Blank beat it out. So this is the fourth air of the afternoon for the Falcons. That's why you got to hustle. Absolutely. But this is something that you would expect to see also. For the past three weeks, we've had some terrible weather um, that has really made it difficult for high school baseball teams to be able to practice outside Take off a tent. and keep their reps and, um, and, and just stay on schedule. So, like, baseball is such a routine-driven sport. Well, there was a major disruption of the routine right at the time when um, the season was supposed to really start kicking into high gear. There's the pitch. It's off speed. 70 miles an hour. So Fletcher Warner, 442 hitter entering the afternoon with four doubles, a triple, 
five RBIs. Not bad for your leadoff man. Ground ball right into the hole, but then that's it. That was they get the out at second there. That was getting a, out number seventeen. Who is that? So that was a, yeah, that was Blank who got out, but that was a really nice play from the shortstop Morrison there to range into the hole. He did not backhand it, so he threw it off his right leg, a little 3 o'clock throw over the second baseman, and was able to get the force out. So fielder's choice, 6-4 in the scorebook, and there's one away. Close call, but he's safe off the steal to second. Runner on second, Matthew Fisher at the plate, number 22. So that's 72 mile an hour breaker, four strike one. So the count is 0-1. Fletcher Warner last game stole home. And not 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 a not a game changer scoring air stole home, like legit stole home stole home. No pass ball. No. And that's a hard ground ball into the hole. And they're gonna not send Fletcher home. Although that's a fast little kid right there. They're going to send in the courtesy runner, David Livingston, again for Matthew Fisher. You know, with one out, you don't want to necessarily take it. You got the heart of the lineup coming up, 3-4-5, Ben Campion, Aiden Chadley, Caden Blank. You don't want to take the bats out of their hands, so I can understand the hold there from head coach Zach Starr, although Fletcher Warner is very fast. The play was right in front of the left field. There would have been a short throw. That's both the right but I call. I think the right call, yeah. Ben Campion at the plate. Outside, strike, goes for the East. Livingston stealing second. Interestingly enough, they, they threw the ball at a second. It was a, it was a pickoff play. Surprise! What's that? So, so the shortstop, the shortstop came in and cut it. So Livingston, recognizing that, was able to steal that one standing straight up. So that will count as a stolen base, not defensive indifference, because they were holding the runner and they did throw down. Strike two. That's a pop. Yeah, that Let's was a miss. Catchers. That was a misread on uh, on my radar gun. That was definitely not 126 miles an hour. Well, <laughs> never know. Record team broken every day out here at Kipper Farm Park. And there's the cut. That's way inside. That was 85. Five. Yeah, I, I don't believe Gerstel has Sid Finch uh, throwing for them. <laughs> the. Fastest yeah, the no, the it was a it was a joke that Sports Illustrated, rest in peace, the magazine did uh, years ago. It's like an April Fool's joke. They made up a character, somebody who threw 150 miles an hour barefoot, like in the Himalayas. Yeah, good stuff. It sounds like some coach Knox Oxford as an insider, you know, perspective. All right, here we go, Ben. And there's the pitch, swing and a miss. 87. Down low. That's going to send it back to the dugout. And here is Aiden Shadlack coming up to the plate. Fletcher Warner resting at third base right now. Livingston, the courtesy runner at second. Aiden Shadlack, he has a chance here to pick up a teammate here. Two outs, runners in scoring position. Ball gets by. Side and low, and Fletcher's going to get home on that, securing a 2 0 lead for the Admirals. On the wild pitch. He's kicking up dirt on his way in. He's a fast little kid. Fletcher Warner is very talented in lots of different things, and baseball just happens to be one of them. Oh, yeah. We here at Severn are absolutely blessed to have Fletcher join us. Couldn't be more thankful. So, the wild pitch, the second one of the afternoon for Travis Smith, brings home the second run of the game for the Admirals. Outside, but a swing and a miss. 87 on that tailing fastball. That fastball had some serious movement. Good job. Hey, curb your enthusiasm there, John. Good stick. Oh. He missed the bunt. 
and that ball's gonna get by. And with the hustle from the catcher, um, line, and that was kind of a seven scores. So yeah, that's a score. What's the was was no excitement here, no celebration. So I think there's just a lot of confusion um, by everybody involved except us because we know that that was a pass ball. He missed the bunt completely. The ball went to the backstop, and Livingston. But he didn't make contact, so it was just an attempted swing strike. He not stealing the ball. He did, so that's what happened. Eighty nine on that fastball for strike three. If it, he does make contact, you, you can't steal on So if he had fouled that back, then it would have been a foul ball, a dead ball. So since he didn't make contact, that ball is live, and that's why the runner on third could go home. Livingston inexplic inexplic inexplicably slowed up going home. Kids at home watching that, you should run all the way through. You don't stop until the umpire puts his hands up. But okay. long story short, no harm, no foul. The Admirals do pick up two runs thanks to the wild pitch and the pass ball with two outs. So two runs on one hit, one error, nobody left on base. We're three innings complete, 7-3, Gerstel zero. Gerstel's got a big team. Why don't we have a TV? Not, not for you. Like it's like it's just just under the number you would need to have like a just a box of Like you think you need to have thirty because then you can do like eighteen and twelve. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Nine and some subs. Exactly. <laughs> All right, we are back here, about to begin the top of the fourth inning. Severn leading Gerstel 3-0. 4-5-6 up due for the Falcons, leading things off Travis Smith, the pitcher. Matt Fisher in his fourth inning of work has yielded scattered. The right word scattered. When you don't give up runs and you're giving up hits, we'll use the word scattered. So he's scattered three hits over three innings. It's a sports information insider piece right there. That's a foul step over the backstop. I think that ball got launched. So, so like if he had given up three or four runs on three hits, we would say gave up three or four runs or yielded three or four runs. But when you've given up one or no runs on, on a couple hits, you'd say scattered. You know, here, there. They have had one base hit each inning, but he's been able to work his way out of it each time. And here's the pitch. Outside ball. That was a nice little changeup. Had some nice feathering action down and away there, 70 miles an hour. Don't flinch there, John. Chat, we just flinched. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> yeah. Th this, this chain link fence in front of you, John, is going to protect you from getting killed. I don't trust it. Not you don't trust the engineers? Nope. Okay. I'm not an experienced veteran, so this is so. And there's the pitch. Oh. Oh. That's a ball. That was a beautiful 69 mile an hour curveball there. I like that one. Tough, but good take by Smith there to make the count two and two. Huh. All right. And a little foul ball punch down the third base line. So if, if I'm reading that right there, so he threw a fastball and he's way out in front and the pitch before he, it was curveball. What do you think he's sitting here? Fastball? So, 68 mile an hour curveball, 3 2. So, that's why he threw the curveball there. He was sitting fastball. So, now the reason why I asked that question is he was out in front of the fastball there. Okay, a little. Oh, that ball's popped into the outfield. Good read by Sean Ward. Makes the catch. Which marks two outs? One out. One out for the Admiral. Leave off out. So, Sean Ward. Another very nice play, ranging out into deep left center there to corral the first out of the inning. 
brings up the right fielder, Jack Bruffy. The Admiral's outfields looked really good today. Nice play by Campion on, in left to get the third out of the first inning. Chalma two. Barney came just short, but really could not have done any more to get in front of that. Exactly. And he got in front of him. He got in front of him, kept it in front of him, didn't let the ball get by, didn't give up the extra 90. As that first pitch curveball misses just down and in, ball one. Here's the pitch by Fisher, outside ball. Counts two up. Foul tip by six. Bruffy. Bruffy. You should know him. He was the wrestler, dude. I don't think I wrestled him. Uh, him uh, definitely not. Come on. Don't don't all the wrestlers in the MIAB conference know one another? Well, something like that. Curveball in the dirt for ball three. Count is 2 1. Oh, 2 on 1. Okay, well, I'm going to change that back. Wait, wasn't there two uh, we're gonna, tips? No, it wasn't just one. Okay, then yes. Just one. So the count, we had it wrong on the graphic. That's not all right. We're going to go with whatever the umpire says because the umpire is the one that really matters. Not what we say, what he says. And a uh, high fly ball. Camp is just absolutely parked under it. No issue at all getting out there. Two outs for the Admirals. Number one for your still. Brian Morrison, the shortstop. Made a, to the plate. made a nifty play in the hole at short to get the first out of the inning and the force play at second, the bottom half of the third. Seventy eight on that fastball. Apparently just misses. Connects nicely once again into the hole, and Sean Ward absolutely dives for that. Comes just short. Campion with a clean backup. Yeah, he dropped it. And that's just not in time. Yep, so that's going to be a two out double off the bat. Two off. Smashed. Yeah, that was, hit, that was hit pretty hard. I'll tell you what, I, I was thinking there for a second we we're going to see another Sean Ward diving catch in left center. It was, it was just about six inches. May even tipped off his glove there. Camping with the backup, getting it into second. A little more of a Max Barney diving catch. Yeah. But Morrison's second double of the year. Puts the runner in scoring position for two away. Drake Hakins, the batter, grounded short his first time up. Four for 11 batting on this young season. So that's 364 if you can do your math quickly. 75 mile an hour pitch, flailed on a miss, strike one. So working ahead, Fisher. Dism will look at second. It's back on the mound. Dean Chadlick working and holding the runner at second there. Flashes. Fastball down the middle, and oh. that smash into the third base shortstop hole, and here comes the throw from Ben Campion. And the runner from second advance to third. So, so we got first and third. I was. It's a little interesting. I can understand why, but a little interesting with – the shortstop holding the runner, flashing to hold the runner there. I'm not saying that he would have gotten to that ball because that ball was clearly in the hole. But, you know, you have a right-handed hitter up who has had a tendency to hit a grounded to short his first time up to run a risk of getting your shortstop out of position there, covering the bag at second on a pickoff play. Tries to hold it, but just extends a little too far. So that's a strike. Yeah, I think I don't know if he called it on the swing or the pitch because both look good for us. Yeah. Seventy-five miles per hour on that offering from the junior southpaw Matt Fisher. John Davis, the second baseman, transfer from Mount Airy Christian, a sophomore, came into the day hitting 154 in the year, but did get a single his first time up. 
big spot here for the Falcons. And low ball. Just below the knees. 77 miles an hour on that pitch. Davis committed the fourth error of the game for the Falcons last inning, throwing an absolute howitzer offline to first after he had bobbled it on a grounder to second. Beautiful frame by catcher there. I mean, possibly a strike, but definitely making it look good. Well, it was a strike because the umpire called it that. It doesn't matter what we think. It only matters what the umpire thinks. That caught the black, 75 mile per hour, tailing two-seam fastball, and the count's now one and two. Big pitch here for Fisher. See if he can get out of this, wiggle out of this here. We got first and third. Here's the pitch inside ball. It'll be interesting to see here. So it's 2-2 count here. You have your eight hitters hitting 154 on the year. Do they try to go maybe a, del a delay steal here of some kind? Do they try to find a way to manufacture a run? And that's why he gets a throw over here. Because in that 2-2 count, he's not going to want to bounce one, but you might want to... They might, they're, they're might, they're, 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 they might be up to something here. It's a good count for something to be up. Inside that ball, smash to center. Sean Ward under it with the catch. Three outs. And the Admirals are able to put him away just in time. So, just in time. So, a two out double, a two, a two out single. Crisis averted for Matt Fisher. He's able to work out of it without giving up a run. No runs, two hits, no errors, two left. Three and a half in the books. From Kinder Farm Park, 7 3, Kirstel 0. So, so I'm calibrated correctly? <laughs> you never know with the pocket radars and the angle. Sometimes you can get some funky readings. Okay, good. Glad I got it set up right. He, the, curve, the curve has been in the upper 70s, and then um, his change-up, he has a change-up? Mid-70s. Like 74 to 76. All right, we are back here, bottom half of the fourth inning. Five, six, seven, due up for your Admirals. So leading things off is the first baseman, Caden Blank. He struck out looking on an 87-mile-an-hour heater his first time up. Here's the pitch. Uh, outside, the ground ball. He bobbles it a second error, and he's going to be safe. Is that an error? That is an error. That is he had time. He could have come up with it cleanly. So cleanly had time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was a couple steps to his right. We would expect a high school baseball player at this level to be able to make that play. At least I do. But I'm not the official scorer. I have that as their fifth error of the game, the second error of the game for the second baseman Davis. But regardless, runner on first, leadoff man on for the Admirals. So does the concept of what an error is change based on the game? Like little league is different than like the play? absolutely. Absolutely. There have been much, many arguments about what's a Little League base hit. First pitch taken, 81 for strike one. Brennan Chadwick, the catcher, reached on an E3 his first time up. Ground ball to short. And inside ball. Chadwick doesn't move muscle. 
No, you expect that from a catcher. Catcher's not afraid of contact. Good point. Catcher's not afraid of a little contact. Yeah. Coach Starr was given the signs, and Gristel tries to do a pickoff move to first, but Kane Blank wasn't asleep there, and he gets back safely. Seventy-two mile per hour uh, curveball there. It looks like for strike two. I love how they say fire right as he swings. It's a little tradition I left behind. Oh. Yeah. Okay. It's, you know, the future generations must remain. Gotcha. Had a long proceed my lifetime. 82 mile an hour fastball taken. And he's all safe for the steal set. So. We got a runner on second. Brendan Shad like in the plate. All right, Chad, let's move down. Nice job by Kane Blank there to get the jump, get into scoring position with nobody at. So now the complexion of this at bat changes for. Whoa! That what happened there. That, that was, was a foul a, ball and a half. Yeah, that was a foul ball that if anyone was in its path, uh, they, they might have needed to use one or two of their nine lives. It wasn't even really hit straight that, out. It was, was just kind of tipped really fast. That was, it was squared up. It was, it was just late. He was late on it. He hit barrel foul. <laughs> up the middle, base it. And Mattis fired up the middle. First and third year, and the wacky throw on the pitcher, he's looking home. Blank was looking home there. I think that ball makes its way to the backstop. Blank's gone. So, very nice job there from... Brendan Chadwick, that complexion of that bat completely changed when the runner moved to second. So his, his job was to hit behind the runner, and he did exactly that, but did one better by getting a single up the middle. Blank held it third there on the throw. So runners on the corners, one out. Max Barney in the courtesy run for the catcher, Brendan Chadwick, and the batter, Sean Ward. Uh -huh. Here's the pitch, foul tip. No. Nope, that's fair. That's my mistake, coach. Caught by the second baseman. We'll pop out. So, unfortunately, an unproductive first out of the inning there for the Admirals. Brings up the designated hitter, Lawrence Jacobs. The Admirals have had success after this afternoon by putting pressure on Gerstel. Let's see if they maybe try to do something here to continue that pressure on the base paths. 84 Outside on the side ball, and then they go for the steal, and then he's going to be safe. Blank is going to score. I think they tried to cut it. They, they went for catch him through to second, short top cut it. Bobbled the cut, and then I'll help right, please. So kind of like what I had predicted was going to happen there. They try to get creative, try to force the issue, um, and they do exactly that there. It's first pitch ball. And that's a wild pitch. That is a low outside in the dirt. 82 miles an hour here. And, and who is that on third base? That is... That's Barney. Barney is on third base. So he's in scoring position. Lawrence to the plate. Lawrence, I believe, struck out last night. No, he grounded the grounded first. Out. But doing that right here will score a run. So, you know. Hit, so if it's he, two outs, it doesn't count. Right. If it's a force. Correct. So, I mean, you can understand. You can feel for Travis Smith here a little bit. You know, five errors behind the defense. He's, he's put, you know, thrown strikes. He's made them put the ball in play. They just haven't made the plays behind him. Down the middle strike. He's looking at it, but so, let's see if he can get in there and attack. So you can understand why he might be a little frustrated, a little overthrow there that led to that wild pitch run. Sure. Runner moving to third. Let's see if we can capitalize off that. Here's the pitch outside. Ball. Counts three and one. Again, ja Jacobs, his mindset, ground ball right side, scores a run. And there's the foul tip, making the count. Three and two. Loaded. And, that's a, and that is exactly the right game plan there for Jacobs. He's trying to go the other way with that. 
I need to get close here. But he doesn't he doesn't need to be throwing a strike here because if he puts a runner on, it sets up the double play to get out of the inning. So he doesn't have to throw a strike here. And that's exactly what happens as he throws a 73 mile per hour curveball for ball four. See if he was gonna get him to chase. First and third, we got Andy Blank at the dish. What do you think of that analysis? What was that analysis? Recognizing 3-2, he didn't have to throw a strike there to see if he was going to get him to fish because now if, if he fishes, he strikes out, and if he doesn't, yeah. then it sets up the double play threat. Loose, lose. But, but the big inning is in play here as the pitch count does build up for Travis Smith, who came into the year with just three innings pitched. Asking a lot out of the hard-throwing right-hander. 83-mile-an-hour fastball. Low, they tried to back pick. They've been looking for the back pick all game. I haven't. It might have been their first attempt. But. Lawrence Jacobs gets the steal. So you got two runners in scoring position on the first pitch ball. Fastball down low, 2 and 0. 84 on that reading. So the velocity has dipped a little, but not as much as you would expect for someone who's in their fourth inning of work having thrown three innings all year coming into today. Really? And that's inside another ball. Mixing the count. Marino. Marino. Admiral's doing a great job of being aggressive and putting pressure on this Falcons defense when they get runners on base. Looked like it was either getting you over or a changeup of some kind because he took a little off on that. It was 78 for strike one. And I think fouled, but into the catcher's so, chest. Count runs full 3 2. So, interesting situation here. Nine hitter up, one out, runners on second and third. He doesn't necessarily need to throw a strike here. It would load the bases, but it would set up the force in any base, but it does turn the lineup back over the top of the order in Fletcher Warner. And he misses 85 down low, visibly frustrated, ball four. Bases loaded, and who we got up to the plate? Fletcher Nothing Warner. Less. Nothing less than our leadoff hitter to get contact, score some runs, secure this lead. So Colt Ginger warming up left-hander in the Falcons' bullpen right now. Can I see that from that far away? Absolutely. That's what corrective lenses can do for you, man. What is that, Shane? All right, here we go. Here's the pitch. Foul tip. It's out of play. Oh, that was planted. So, so Warner, 442 hitter on the year, four doubles, a triple five RBIs. Grounded out to the pitcher and reached on the fielder's choice his last time up. Looking to do damage here in a big spot. Yeah, Little check swing is going to drop into center field for a base hit. Brings home a run for your Admirals. Makes the score 7-5, Gerstel 0. My man's Trevor McNamara was between that foul ball for the viewers that are wondering. Matthew Fisher steps up to the plate. Number 22. And believe it or not, for the Admirals, they've scored five runs, but that was their first RBI of the day. So second mound visit of the inning for the pitcher means that we are going to have ourselves a pitching change. A very tough afternoon for Travis Smith. He definitely went out there, poured his heart out. It was pounding fastballs, making the Admirals put the ball in play. Unfortunately, his defense was unable to make many plays behind him. And so he's going to exit with the bases loaded, one out, bottom of the fourth inning, with a Severn leading 5-0. Watch the speeds. 
watch the speeds. I'm just warming up just to get in. Okay. First push was something like that. What's this guy say? Colt Ginger. This isn't Miller's fault. It is, but it's just barely. starting from scratch yeah. like because yeah. that was going to be the case of UVA. Yeah. all right new pitcher in the game for Gerstel number two southball Colt Ginger third relief appearance of the year he's 0-1 four innings of work he's given up six hits five runs only one of which was earned two walks two strikeouts makes for 1.75 ERA 67 percent strikes on the year so he is right around the plate but he's going to bring a very different look than what we've seen from Travis Smith so Travis Smith who is throwing mid-80 fastball from the right hand side in the warm-ups the best we saw from Ginger was low 70s fastball mid-60s curveball so different look Garcelle going lefty on lefty against the powerful Matt Fisher. The illustrious Matt Fisher at the plate here. See what he can't get done. Count is one on one. No, clear, clear count. How'd he do? He was single into the umpire. So, first pitch, breaking ball down low, counts one and oh. Is that what that is? Ref is staying strapped with a rule book in his back pocket. And that ball is smashed just out of the glove of the shortstop. And Lawrence Jacobs will score. Fish advances to first. So an Base R is loaded. This is beautiful. An RBI single off the bat of Matt Fisher. We're going to call that single because that was a very hard hit ball. So single RBI. All the runners advance 90 feet. And it makes the score 7-6. Gerstel 0. Mm. I love my guys, but it did bounce out of his glove. Yeah, but that ball, that ball was smoked, and he had to reach far for that. Okay, so, so it's, it's not just the glove touch. No, it's not a glove touch. Pretty good right here. So, courtesy runner for That's Fisher, the, the pitcher, number seven, David Livingston, and that brings Ben Campion heading to Dartmouth next year. Up to the plate. Here we go. Way high. Get out of there. 61 miles per hour on that breaking ball. Again, very different look. The Admiral's lineup, it has, you know, between Fisher, Campion, Shadlick, and Blank, it goes lefty, lefty, Here's switch hitter, lefty. Pitch. Down the middle. Looking straight. So it, it makes sense that they bring in the lefty here because it forces the lefty on lefty matchup for the two guys. Swings Shadlick around to the right side and then lefty on Blank. So Grand slam coming up. That's low. Good man, good man. Not you haven't Come earned on. you haven't earned premonition or status yet. What's that? Being able to call ahead. Okay. I, I'm calling right here. Well, I think if you see any situation where there's a grand slam, I think we're looking at that. Yeah. And I'll die on that hill. That ball fair down the line. And here comes a one run again. scores. Two run score. Livingston's gonna hold up at third. A two-run double down the line off the bat of Aiden Shadlick. I'm sorry, Ben Campion, his third double of the year. RBIs number 13 and 14 make the score 7-7. Seven, seven, Gerstel, 0. Correction, 8-0. Hey, let's go. Hey, Aiden Shalik hitting from the right side here. Slow off speed, way outside. Shadlack, not in a bad spot at all. Runners on second and third. And he's gonna make contact there with the high fly ball. 
and that is caught by the left fielder. Ball's bobbled, but. So fly out to left, doesn't score the runner. So two away, and the Admirals have batted around in the lineup. So the 10th batter of the inning is leadoff man, Caden Blank. Sixty-two miles an hour. So you know why these two runs are important here? Because it would make the score ten nothing. And if the Admirals can get to ten and then hold them scoreless, this game would be over. Is it fourth inning round? Yeah, bottom four. That ball's popped up. I might have jinxed it. So let's so, go over the mercy. Over so there. not right now because the inning is over. So we'll, we'll talk about that at the top half of okay. the inning. So the Admirals, they played five runs on one, two, three, four hits. There was one error and two runners left on base. Four, four innings complete from Kinder Farm Park. Seven, eight, Gristel zero. Appreciate it. Appreciate my effort. You like that? Yeah, sure. I'll take it. You take it? He's definitely joking, but yeah. Doesn't matter. Here we are back, top of the fifth inning. Severn leading Gerstel, 8 0. 9 1 2 up for the Falcons. Third baseman Craig Masik, who caught the third and final out of the inning there in foul territory to lead things off. So, getting back to the whole mercy rule question that you had there, John, um, after four and a half, after five innings or four and a half, if the home team is leading, strike. Strike one. And so if you are up by 10 or more runs after five innings or four and a half if you're the home team, the game's over by mercy. And then it's 15. No, that's uh, no it's, it's over. It's over. No, so. the fifth inning. It's... Fifth inning, yep. So that's where those two runs would have been critical because if the Admirals could have scored there, it would carry a 10 nothing lead going into this inning. If they held them scoreless, the game would have been over. Okay. So it's a ground so that could ball. Have been the winning. Nice okay. job. Nice field by the second base. Blank to blank out. connection. Blank to blank. Andy to Caden. There's one away. And that does turn the lineup over for Gerstel. Braden Gaminer, one for two on the afternoon, hitting 500 on the year. 65 mile per hour curveball for strike one. There's the pitch. Inside ball. Not a bad miss there, 76 mile an hour fastball. Sets up a lot of different combinations he could go to here. Breaking ball. 64. 
doing a beautiful job of locating and changing speeds this afternoon. It's tips. Back. Is that good? So keeps the keeps the count alive. One and two. Fisher, four and a third innings. It's given up five hits, no runs, no walks, three strikeouts. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. And a beautiful Puts him away to the dugout. And a beautiful job there by the catcher Brendan Chad like to be able to corral that one and catch it cleanly so he didn't have to get the throw down to first. And a 500 hitter on the year. Gaminer has struck out twice against the lefty Fisher. There's two away. Here's the pitch. Strike one. So Fisher, the last five batters has gotten a head first pitch strike. That's what you love to see when you got a lead. Get ahead early. Here's the press from Fisher. Foul tip. Absolutely, absolutely pounding the strike, strike zone. This is exactly what you want to see. You got a big lead. The worst thing you can do is start giving them things. He's making them gonna make them earn everything by pounding the strike zone. Let's see if Fisher can continue to do that. He has been quite efficient and adept at getting out of the challenges this afternoon. Here's the pitch from Fisher. Down low ball. Great 0-2 pitch, 64 mile an hour curveball that was in the strike zone for much of the way there and then just fell off the table at the very end, out of the zone. Good take there from Larson. Big week take. Pitch, and the ball is... Grounded to blank, second base. throws to blank. Yeah. And that is a 1-2-3 inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. Four and a half complete. Seven and eight, Christel zero, two runs, and the game's over. Admirals are field books, so. You awake? <laughs> A little bit. Ortiz. Welcome back here. Bottom half of the fifth inning. If the Admirals can score two runs here, this game will be over by Mercy as the Admirals hold an 8 nothing lead. 6-7-8 due up for the Admirals. Brendan Shadlock, the catcher, leading things off. He reached on an error his first time up and singled back in the fourth inning where the Admirals had 10 batters come to the dish. Here's the pitch from two. And that's punched out to the shortstop. Absolute dart. 
and he's out. That was a great job there from shortstop Morrison. Ranging to his right, got his feet underneath him and made a strong, accurate throw over to first base for a one pitch out to lead off the bottom of the fifth. And that brings up the center fielder, Sean Ward. He's made a couple of nice plays out in center today, Ward has. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. Very different look from Ginger, the relief pitcher here for Gerstel. Smith is throwing 85 to 87 fastball. Three pitch mix. Here's the pitch from Ginger, and that's popped up apples into the center fielder's hands. Sean Ward out. Quickly two away on three pitches. So Travis Smith. His book on the afternoon unofficially is three and a third innings, three hits, eight runs, four of which were earned, three walks, four strikeouts, and he had three wild pitches. Also had a number of pass balls as the defense made five errors behind him. There's Jacobs looking tall as ever. Here's the pitch. Outside ball. Pitch comes in. That's way low. Didn't like a curveball. Maybe a changeup. 66 there. But anyway, it's ball two. Count two and zero. Oh. Admirals need base runners here. Starts with Jacobs here with two outs. Hopefully. 71 miles. 71 miles per hour on his fastball. Like I said, his fastball is about 70 to 71. Count two balls, one strike. For. Questionable count right here. Yes, he took the first two pitches outside the zone and then that fastball for a strike. That pitch fouled. Foul to. Thankfully does not hit uh, Mother on her phone and the count is now two and two. Rung up on a curveball, down and in, but catches the plate for strike three, and the inning is over. Three up, three down for Ginger. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. Five innings complete. Seven, eight, Gersell zero. Welcome back, Kinder Farm Park here in Severna Park, Maryland. Contrary to what the graphic shows up you on your screen, Severn leading Gerstel by a score of 8 0 as we begin the top of the sixth. 3 4 5 2 up for Gerstel, leading things off to center fielder Dylan Knee. Here comes Fish from Fisher. Inside ball. Fisher in his sixth inning work. It's been very efficient so far. Five innings, five hits, no runs, no walks, or strikeouts. I'm sorry, correction, one walk, it was intentional. Strike down the middle, 74. So they did have the one intentional walk back in the first to Travis Smith. Another strike from Fisher. Beautiful curveball at 62 there. Getting ahead, one and two, doing what he's been doing the last couple innings, working ahead in the count.
Here's a fish from Fisher now. And he gets just under it. And that's caught by Blank. Which one? <laughs> Who's to say? Caden Blank. First baseman. So great job of getting in on the hands on that foul pop out to the first baseman, Caden Blank. One away. Travis Smith remains in, so he was a pitcher slash DH. Potential walk in the first, flew out to center in the fourth. Interesting combination. Outside ball. So Smith, a 455 hitter on the year with five doubles and four RBIs. Seventy-five, ball. seventy-five miles per hour, taken below the knees. Ball two. Smith gave up eight runs, only four of which were earned in three and a, th three and a third innings of work on the hill this afternoon. Ball. Counts three and zero. Oh. It's the first time we've really seen Fisher fall behind like this this entire afternoon. Apparently that misses upstairs for a four pitch walk. So the only Falcon to receive a free pass this afternoon has done so on the intentional fashion and the unintentional fashion. And so Falcons have a man on first with one away for the right fielder, Jack Bruffy. Low ball from Fisher there. Good block by Shadlow. You wonder here, I mean, like I said before, the weather hasn't been the greatest, so everything's been kind of thrown off kilter, off schedule a little bit. Fisher has looked amazing this afternoon. He's been in for a hot minute. But you wonder if... Low it, ball there from Fisher. You wonder at this point, is he potentially fatiguing a little bit? Is he getting a little bit tired? I would be. And here's the mound visit. Maybe We're likely going to see a sub. No one warming up in the bullpen. Never mind. Scratch that. Just have a little talk. He's thrown six straight balls. He hasn't missed by big amounts, but he has missed in the eyes of the home plate umpire just enough to have the pitches not called strikes. So head coach Zach Starr going out to the mound, talking to his junior left-hander, who has hurled a fantastic ball game so far for your Admirals. Cannot complain for the performance so far. Admirals currently up 8-0. Five and a third innings with no runs on five hits, two walks, four strikeouts. He's worked the last couple innings, the last two batters notwithstanding. He's done a great job of throwing first pick strikes, getting ahead in the count 0 2, 1 2. But the last two at bats here, including this current one, he's gotten behind. Let's see how he does here getting back in the count 2 0. Low ball. No, that was called a strike. strike. Come on, you're, you're, you're 60 feet away from the umpire, man. Come on. I misspoke with what I said there. You know <laughs> what happens in the business. Here's the pitch from Fisher. Low ball, actually, this time. Low ball, actually, this time, yeah. So it'll be interesting if if, if Fisher ends up requiring um, a reliever, who does Coach Star go to here? Like you said, oh. That's ball, ball four. Four. So back-to-back -back walks for Fisher, and the Falcons have something going without having to do, swing the bat, which is the exact opposite of what you look to do when you have an eight-run lead and you're potentially looking to try to mercy. Shortstop, Ryan Morrison, step into the plate. Ben Campion threw a couple innings yesterday. Aiden Chadlock threw a couple pitches last game yesterday. And you, you mentioned an interesting point. If they're looking, so we're gonna. I mean, there's no one in the bullpen right now. Right. So, well, we just mentioned it. So it looks like we have ourselves Noah Ludwig. Noah Ludwig is going to enter as a defensive sub in for number five, Ben Campion. So that's going to allow Campion to warm up in the bullpen. So Campion threw about two innings yesterday, but he didn't throw a ton of pitches. So he'd be able to come back to maybe give an inning or so if necessary for today. But first things first, we're uh, 
trying to get out of this damn it, this little hole here with runners on first and second and one out. Pitch by Fisher, and that's popped up off the mound into the hands of Shadlack. No, that was off the. It's either off the foot of, off the foot of Fisher, or kicked off the mound. There's really nothing that um, that Aiden Shadlack could do there. So that's just a unlucky base hit single off the bat of Morrison to load the bases with one away. Drake Hankins, one out. Brendan Shalek goes out to the mound to talk to his left-hander. The south ball. So, big spot here. Seven hitter up four. Gerstel. Hankins came into the game hitting 400, but only 10 at bat. So one for two for today means that he's now five for 12 on the year. So a 417 batting average, but it's a pretty small sample size. He hasn't played in every game, hasn't drawn um, every day at bats like some of the other starters in the lineup. He's the best from Fisher. Strike. Pain in the black with 75 there. The velocity is, is dipped a little bit. As you'd expect. Yep. But we gotta gotta locate. Pitching is like real estate. Location, location, location. I'd say is enough high school velocity over communication mistakes and location. There's the pitch and then there's the back pick attempt. What a pick! by Fletcher Warner at third base there. Brendan Chadlick tried to throw behind the runner and he threw a one hop in foul territory down the third baseline. And, and Fletcher Warner did an amazing job to scoop that block that to prevent w at least one run from scoring there. Inside ball. 67 mile per hour breaking ball there. Good miss, close miss. That pitch was in the zone for much of the time there and then just broke off at the end. Hankins asked for time, umpire grants it. We are at the home of the Green Hornets. Although that one didn't look green. Here's the pitch from Fisher. Strike. Called strike three. 77 miles per hour painted on the inside corner for an important second out of the inning. The runners not advance. So now the second baseman John Davis, the sophomore transfer from Mount Airy Christian, digs in with two outs and the base is loaded. Fisher trying to wiggle out of another jam here this afternoon. Here's the pitch from Fisher. Strike. 76. Fisher really reached back there on that previous pitch. 77 to 77 with location. That is a beautiful combination from the lefty in six in a six inning of work. Right Strike there. two. A delayed call from the home plate umpire. It took a second. He's like, I like that pitch. 77. We're going to call that a strike. Counts 0 and 2. You can tell 14 1 at that one. Not enough, though. Here's the fish from Fisher. And pass ball. Oh, wild pitch. He's gonna and ten is gonna score off that, making him score eight one. Yeah, he's gonna want that one back. Bases that loaded. was no, the bases are longer loaded because yeah, everybody yeah. moved up a base. He's gonna want that one back though, unfortunately. Like 0-2 count, you want to waste one, but you don't want to waste one that that gets by and gives away a run for nothing. Never really want a wild pitch, do you? Home plate umpire having a conversation with Davis. Much to the chagrin of head coach down the third baseline, the third base coach, he wants him to get in the box. Umpire to stop talking to his player. 
One and two the count. Second and third, two outs. And foul tip. Off the pole, ricochet. Almost, someone almost got decapitated out here. But we're good. <laughs> Tell you what, there were some good moves from the Gerstel parents. Here's one Gerstel parent. Looks like he's in a suit. He moved pretty quick, too. I don't think I would move as quick in the suit as he did. No, he was bobbing what he should have been weaving. Yeah, he, he, he did what he needed to do to get out of the way. Here's a pitch from Fisher. Low ball. Good take there from 14. That was not... Not a bad pitch. No. But right now, I think right now, Fisher's got to be of the mindset, I need to get him on this pitch. I need to give him my best pitch got right now. 2-2, I'm going to go right after him on my best pitch. Here comes the pitch from Fisher. And that ball popped out into center field, recovered by Sean Ward, and two runs score. So a two-run single off the bat of John Davis, and that's why, ladies and gentlemen, you don't walk people. Make them hit their way on. Both walk guys who walked came home to score, and that's going to close the book. Well, not close the book. That's going to end the afternoon for Matt Fisher. But a very strong effort from the junior left-hander as he walks off to a chorus of applause from the severed contingent. And we have ourselves a pitching change Ben Campion coming in for your Admirals. And we'll talk a little bit about more about this senior left-hander in just a moment. Lefties on the semi All right, into pitch for your Admirals. Two outs here in the top half of the sixth inning is number five, Ben Campion. His eighth appearance of the year, 22 innings, 24 hits allowed, 14 runs, eight earned, six walks, 26 strikeouts. So he is right around the plate, 2.55 ERA, and opponents are hitting 270 off the lefty. That's right. First pitch, 70 miles per hour, called strike one. Coming out with a bang here, champion is. Take off attempt. So with the re-entry, we'll, we'll give you a defensive update. So Campion comes into pitch. So Fisher, who was the pitcher, moves to first base. And then Blank, who was the first baseman, moves out to left field. That fastball is taken in the dirt. Counts one and one. Craig Mazik, the batter for Gerstel, he, he had the magic for Gerstel last year that led them to the MIAB Championship Series. Strike two. Against St. Paul's, trailing by one in the seventh inning with the final out, Mazik delivered a two-run single that put Gerstel ahead and sent them into the Championship Series last year. Time out here. Here comes the pitch from Campion. Yeah. Swing and miss 60. from Gerstel. That's it, five. And puts them away for the inning. 
60, and way to come in when it's needed. Yeah, absolutely. 63 mile per hour curveball just absolutely fell off the table. The critical strike three to get out of the inning. But Gerstel does take advantage of a little bit of fatigue wildness from Matt Fisher as they score three runs on two hits with two walks, no errors, and one runner left. Five and a half innings complete. Severn leads Gerstel eight to three. So as Ginger finishes up his warm-ups in his third inning of relief, uh, do give you a score update. Uh, final score just came in. Uh, AACS, who got absolutely smoked by St. Paul's yesterday by a score of 18-2 to two in five innings, comes away with a pitcher's duel 1-0 victory against Glenelg Country, who defeated these Gerstel Falcons just one day ago. So that's the only final score that has come across the ticker um, at this point as we are headed here into the home half of the sixth inning if Colt Ginger um, doesn't need a relief pitcher for all the warm-ups he has taken for this third inning of relief. He's had a little bit more than five, folks. Usually a new pitcher gets eight and, and you come in and you get five, or if you have a time, you get a time. But... Regardless, it's beautiful, it's warm, it's easy to get loose today. Would you agree as a, as a, as a former Severn Admiral baseball player, like, yeah, yeah, this is a good weather to get loose and, and play in? With my years of experience, I would say yes. I would concur. Concur? Good. Andy Blank to lead things off for the Admirals, the nine-hitter, second baseman. Here comes the pitch from two. Slow dropper just in the and when you When you say slow... That was slower than the bus that went to um, the zoo today because that was 60 miles an hour, that pitch. Going 65 on the highway. Here's a pitch, and it's popped up. It's looking like that's going to fall into first base, pedal back, and it's called. Pop out for Andy Blank. Admirals are having a difficult time adjusting to this, the slower pitching from Ginger. Ginger's come in and it's just absolutely just pounded the strike zone. Um, the Admirals just they're underneath, out in front. They just they're geared up for, for velocity and now they're seeing 68 to 72. Fletcher Warner in the box. Here comes the pitch. Foul ball. Trails to the back stop there. So Warner. He's one for three on the afternoon with two runs scored, Fisher on deck. an RBI, and a stolen base. Warner is the only player in the lineup who has yet to see Ginger. Everyone else, so this will be their second time through. There's the cut from Warner. Slow ground ball to short. Short, and there's the throw. It's overthrown. But Warner would have Warner's beaten safe. He would have beaten that out anyway. It would have been bang, bang. So we're going to give that a slow roller infield single for Fletcher Warner. Again, am I the official scorer, folks? Absolutely not. So do not take my word as some holy grail. It is not. I take your word as some holy grail. I'm well, I, I appreciate I appreciate that. But in terms of the official scoring purposes, do not count for me as the official scorer. So one out infield single off the bat of Fletcher Warner brings up the now first baseman, former pitcher, Matt Fisher. Yeah. 
Fisher, two for three on the afternoon with two runs scored. Well, he hasn't scored two runs. His, um, his courtesy runner has scored two runs. Outside, ball. Did, did he uh, throw that pitch slower than you drove on in here? Were you two-wheeling two it on in to be here for first pitch? Because that pitch was 57. Were you going more than 57 on two wheels to get in here at first pitch? I was definitely on two wheels at some point. I took a sharp turn. The car kind of went up a little bit. Nothing out of the ordinary. Here's a throw to second off the steal. Safe. Fletcher Warner, second stolen base of the afternoon after he had three stolen bases yesterday, including a steal of home. That 59 mile an hour curveball was called a strike, so the count is one and one. They go for the steal at third. Yep, and another steal. And safe. So Fletcher Warner, for his third consecutive or second consecutive game, has three stolen bases. It's a fast little kid. And, and they're going to intentionally walk Matt Fisher to bring up Ben Campion. All right. Well, let's let's see how Ben takes the disrespect here. Let's see how he deals with the disrespect. I mean, the guy who's got 14 RBIs on the air hitting over 400, you're going to intentionally walk him to get to him? This is a this is a bold move, Cotton. Let's see how it plays out for and him. Here comes the courtesy, David Livingston for <laughs> Fisher once again. <laughs> so Campion, one for two with a two-run double his last time up. Runners on the corners here with one out. Well, I don't know if this is a courtesy runner anymore situation because he's not pitching. So maybe this is a defensive replacement and they end up putting Livingston in the outfield and move Blank back. Do they call a strike? Steal a second and There's it's your ribbies. safe. Close call there at third, though. They tried the backpack on Fletcher now. But they did call that first pitch a strike. So Livingston with another stolen base today. I've lost track because he's shown up in different places. That one's taken low at 61. Here comes Campion. Here's the pitch. Bunt attempt, but pulls back just in time. And now it looks like Fletcher Warner is in a pickle. And they run him back to third, and then he's, he's safe. safe. Oh! Ouch, the call is out. Wow, they called him out there. I don't know about that one. They called him out. So, wow. so we have a runner on second. So we got a caught stealing there. And so now there's two away with a runner on second, and the count being two and one. I get one, Ribby. The coach is not contesting the bunt. It was an Ivy League take, I'd say. Yeah, I, it, so a lot happened Let's here. You, you gotta, here's what's hard. I understand what the Gerstel head coach is saying, but at the same time, this is a two-man crew where you had a situation where as soon as that was happening, you had the play going on at third that became the call of the, of the base umpire. So for him to have to watch that and then turn quickly, it's. I, I understand what he's saying, but for a two-man crew, that's pretty hard. That's... That's a that's a tough request for him to, to make. Um, understand yeah. exactly where he's coming from because it was borderline. In our opinion, it appeared that Campion did pull it back. At the very minimum, if they had tried to appeal it, he probably was going to mark it safe. It's just a very frustrating afternoon for the Falcons. Um, they have not played to their potential or capabilities, but credit that also to the Admirals for putting the pressure on them defensively, putting the ball in play, getting runners in motion, making them – really work defensively to get these 18 to 21 outs that are needed for a game. It's a two-man crew. All that. I don't know what you're... So, uh, so 
at the high school level, you have a home plate umpire and a base umpire. Oh, that. So at the college it's ranks, two men shorts. Yeah, at the college ranks, you have a th division one. You have three men. So you have first base, oh, third base, and, and then in the majors, there's a four man crew. So you have home plate, first, second, and third. And then in the guard game and in the postseason, yeah, we're good. So what do you like best? The two man, the three man, right, more you run four man. No, what type of guy? Well, no, I was just saying the All Star game and um, in the World Series in the postseason, they do a six man umpiring crew. Oh, six -man. So you've got each of the bases, a left field line and a right field line. The more umpires you have, the more eyes you have out there, the better. So I mean, obviously, you know, more is better, but obviously you have to pick for that. And there's the off neglected twenty four man, right? I've never seen that. Um, I don't know what you're referring to there. Um, that that might have a little bit too much congestion of, of blue out there. <laughs> okay. So, I would disagree. So the home so the home plate and base umpire are still chatting. Calling no swing officially. And so all of that discussion for the count to be two and one with two outs, runner on second. Let's go five for oh, Ben Camp. Trip. All right. Thanks for staying with us, folks. What is so, so confusion over here? So there's the uh, you got the, a little hot the, the the Garcelle head coach was asking for the count. Um, again, just it's a it's a frustrating afternoon. I think everybody who's who's watched and who's present can understand the frustration that the Falcons head coach is uh, feeling right now. Especially with the two men. And check swing there from Campion. And he holds and advances, fast. advances the third on the wild pitch. Three balls, one strike on a very emphatic call. Signal to the Gerstel bench. <laughs> I think they should very clearly know that the count is three and one. For a strike call? Yeah, well, what's the that was awesome. Wait, so what would be the importance of that? Here's the pitch, and that's popped up, and that's down. Cleanly fielded by the short Say. Now, beautiful catch by the first baseman, but there's no. They way. called him out at first. Okay, well, and I they they did not want Cam Ben Campy to get it on base today. Well, they didn't. They wanted to sure. rob him of his 15th RBI of the year. Not only and did it appear that he beat it that exact star will contest it all. Yeah, it did, not only did it appear that he beat it out, it also looked like the first baseman was off the bag trying to elevate to catch that ball. Not a bad play by the first baseman. But no, it, it was look, a heck. It didn't look well. It was a bad. heck of a play defensively. Great job by the shortstop of going and getting that and making a quick throw over to first. Garcelle did everything defensively yeah, that they could possibly. Let's go to New York. That they could possibly do to get out of that, but anyway. There was a whole lot of drama here. You, this isn't 1230 and you're watching your afternoon soaps. This is a Wednesday afternoon baseball here. But there was a lot of drama there. And in all that drama, all it leads to is no runs, one hit. There was an intentional walk and one runner left on base. So through eight in, or through six innings complete, the score, seven, eight, Cristal three. Oh, and then Ben Campion back on the mound here. Oh. Hey, can we go to replay? <laughs> later. <laughs> go to New York. Uh, I'll get to watch it later, right? Well, that, that'll be on the replay. That's on live right now. You can actually pull up So Livingston can't come back in because Fisher re-entered. So they pinch ran. So when you are a pinch runner, you have the choice of either re coming back into the game, and then that burns the pinch runner, or the pinch runner stays in and that burns the original guy. So you can't. Was Fish, so so can Fisher go was out and then come back. In. Right, but now Livingston has to be is now out for the game. He cannot come back in. So who is their go-to pitch? Then? All right, so. I'll, well, hopefully we don't need it because we're up by five and we're going to the final frame. Okay. 
All right, folks, we're back. Um, there's just a lot of frustration, confusion going on here. It's 837 um, here in the visiting half of the seventh. So hopefully the final frame. So Ben, so I'm sorry, uh, Ben Campion, the pitcher, Matt Fisher re-enters the game. 72 mile per hour. Strike, ball. Strike one for Braden Gemeiner. Um, Here's the pitch from Campion. Swing and a miss. So Fisher, who was pinch run for by Livingston. Now, earlier in the game, he was courtesy run for by Livingston, so Livingston could re-enter as well as Fisher. Pitch by Campion, another swing and a miss. And now, but it was dropped, foul tipped, so and it wasn't secured, so count remains 0-2. So because Fisher was no longer the pitcher, of record. And the ball's pounded into the shortstop. Clean throw, and he's out by one. So, just to explain what was going on. So, before, Fisher was able to re-enter as well Livingston. So then when Fisher no longer was the pitcher and they pinch ran with Livingston, they had to make the decision of whether Livingston was going to stay in the game or whether Fisher was yeah. going to stay in. And that first pitch curveball in for strike one. And so they decided to bring Fisher back in at first base so Livingston can no longer enter this game. He is out of the game. Ball outside. Fastball 71. Gavin Larson, the first baseman, one for three on the afternoon. Here's pitch from Ben. Ball inside. Cats out two and one. Take there. Yeah. Campion trying to work quickly there. Larson wasn't having it. Asked for time. The umpire grants it. Here's pitch from Campion. That ball's absolutely smashed into. No. And that ball's down into left. Right. I stay. That ball was not smashed. You got a little confused there. He got actually got that in on the hands because that dropped in between the second baseman and right fielder. I know everything off the bat. It looks like, holy moly, that, that ball's crushed. Especially with the sound. Yeah. The, the aluminum bat does, uh, or the composite bats do uh, do yeah, throw nice, you off a little nice bit. Nice ring to him. Here's the pitch from Campion inside. Corner. Strike one. Oh. Inside corner. He forgot the corner part. <laughs> Well, isn't that, how does that narrow it down? Ooh. Rolls it right into uh, our front. So a wild pitch. Moves Larson up 90 feet. So a runner in scoring position, one away for Dylan Nee, the center, the center fielder, 0 for 3 on the afternoon. He popped out to the first baseman at the time, Caden Blank, to lead off the last inning. And now we got Matt Fisher. Here's the pitch from Campion. 72 mile per hour fastball and the count is one and two. Curveball, 64 miles per hour in the dirt. Good take there by knee. And the count runs even two and two. Here's pitch from Campion. Swing into a foul liner. Hey, that was that was great hop serve by head coach Zach Starr. Two hopper, cleanly fielded, funneled, made a Heads sharp throw moment. back to the pitcher. I mean, I mean that's a. that's All A plus right. stuff right there. And there's the cut from Go get him here. Five. another just identical foul ball. So now the last one was the previous one was head coach Zach Starr. Now that one was their head coach making a nice clean field and throwing back to his pitcher. You could say they're going band for band right now. The, yeah. the coaches are they're dueling fielders right now in foul territory. They're going foul for foul. Here we go, Campion. With the pitch, swing and a miss. Sending seven back to the dugout. 73 miles per hour on that fastball. It looks like his fastest of the day. His second strikeout in relief, and there's two away down to the final out, and that brings up the pitcher slash DH, Travis Smith, who has been showing a lot of respect here at the plate. 
63 miles per hour curveball for strike one. So Travis Smith. <laughs> We've still got another issue. With the phone. Smith 0 for 1, walked on four pitches his last time up, drew an intentional walk the first inning. Here's a pitch from Campion. Swing and a miss again, and he gets sorted there. He got drops to a knee. He wanted not a piece of it. He wanted the whole thing, but he, he got none. Load. He wanted the whole thing, but got none of it. <laughs> Lost so, his balance in the process. That so was... Brendan Chad like goes out to Campion to talk to his southpaw after that. Very aggressive five-run homerish swing there. Um, Is that a curveball? 61 mile per hour curveball on the count. 0 and 2. He does have a disgusting curveball. He does. You just swear it's going where it's not. Outside. Nice job there. 74 on that pitch. A little reach back there. Makes you wonder, is he going to try to go back to the breaker? Is he going to try to... The breaker's working out for him. Yeah. I, he might, he might, go, to the, he might go to the fastball again. Yeah, there's the breaker. And then that's a grounder Ground. to short and... Ball game. Out by a mile. There it is. Ball there it is. game. I'll tell you what. This Admiral's defense... Right. This Admiral's defense... We got that one. Okay, so you're back to half was really impressive today. Uh, so clean defensively, no errors commit, um, just wonderful performance from your Admirals. So Severn with the win, eight to three this afternoon, the final score here from Kinder Farm Park. Your Admirals improve to four and three in conference play. Gersell drops to three and three. Thank you for tuning in this afternoon to watch today's broadcast. John, what did you think of your first Admiral TV broadcast this afternoon? How'd I'll it be go? back. You'll be back? To, to quote the famous Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> You'll be back. Yeah. Awesome. It's great to hear. Well, thank you for tuning in. I'm Mr. Maggard, uh, who helps run Admiral TV. Um, thanks for tuning in this afternoon. Again, your final score, Severn improves to 4-3 and three on the year in conference play with an 8-3 to three victory over yourself. Thank you for watching. Pound it. Noggin. Nice.